The Battlesmith is basically a combat medic mixed with a defensive support who happens to have a metal companion. Hey fellow Game Masters, I'm Richard Quiner, and welcome back to the RPG Daily, your daily dose of all things tabletop role-playing games, helping you build your world and master your game. And today we're finishing up the Specialists for Artificers. This is the third one, the final one. This is the Battlesmith Specialist. As I go through this video, remember to let me know your thoughts on the Battlesmith in the comments below. The Battlesmith differs from the other Artificers in that it's more of a class that's about being on the front line and helping and supporting your party, from the front line of combat. They're more defensive, they are more supportive in that nature, but also they have access to some more martial abilities, martial weapons, and because of that, they can handle things in the thick of it. So let's break down the Battlesmith Specialist. At level three, of course, you get your proficiency, your free tool proficiency. This time you're getting proficiency in Smith's tools, so blacksmith tools exactly, and if you already have it, of course, you get a free tool proficiency of your choice. Also, at level 3, you begin getting your Artificer spells. So, of course, we're going to break down these Artificer spells. Remember, these are the spells that you get. They might be from other spell lists out there. They might not always be Artificer spells, but you still have them available to you, and you never have to have them prepared because they just always are. At level 3, you're getting Heroism and Shield. We talked about Shield in the previous, uh, in the Artillerist, specialist video. Heroism is a way you can bolster your allies' bravery and heroism by giving them immunity to being frightened, as well as giving them temporary HP. It's a pretty simple spell, but it could do a lot in certain combat situations to help out your party. At level 5, you get Branding Smite and Warding Bond. Warding Bond is an interesting spell because it creates a connection between you and an ally or another creature that you then take some of the damage that they receive onto yourself. This is a this is support at its finest, where not only are you there trying to defend them, but you are taking hits, you are taking the damage from them directly. So when you cast this spell on an ally, they instantly gain resistance to all damage and a plus one to their armor class. So that bolsters their defense a little bit. But the downside of that is whenever they are hit and do take damage, you take the same damage that they do. This essentially, instead, it's not just giving them resistance, but you're taking about half the damage off of them and you're taking it onto yourself. That's Warding Bond. At level 9, you get Aura of Vitality and Conjure Barrage. Conjure Barrage is a fun one because you can take a non-magical item or a piece of ammunition, such as a dagger or an arrow, and use it to create a 60-foot cone of death as it fires out a barrage of whatever that item is. Each creature caught in this 60 foot cone barrage of death takes 3d8 damage if they fail the dexterity saving throw and the damage type of the cone is the same damage type as the ammunition or item that you used to conjure the barrage. So for example an arrow would be piercing damage, the 3d8 would also be piercing damage. At level 13 you get aura of purity and fire shield. Aura of Purity is another support spell. It gives a 30-foot radius aura centered on you that moves where you do because it's your aura. And any non-hostile creature in that aura cannot be diseased and they have resistance to poison damage. In addition to that, they gain advantage on saving throws versus multiple afflictions, namely being blind, charmed, deaf, frightened, paralyzed, poisoned, or stunned. At level 17, you get the spells Banishing Smite and Mask Cure Wounds. Mask Cure Wounds we've talked about a lot. Banishing Smite adds an instant extra 5d10 damage to your next weapon attack after you cast the spell, and if that hit lowers a creature's HP down to under 50, that creature is then banished, and the banishment follows the same rules as the banishment spell. I'm not going to get into all the details here, but you can go look that up as well. That is the Battlesmith's spells. You can see it's a lot of support. There is some action and some damage dealing spells, but mainly support spells coming into this. At level 3, you also get the ability Battle Ready, which means you gain proficiency in martial weapons. So you can have your pick of weapons. You can get higher damage weapons if you would like at this point. In addition to that, whenever you make an attack with a magical weapon, you can use your intelligence ability modifier to roll for the attacks and damage instead of your dexterity or strength like normal weapons require. This can make you pretty formidable in combat as intelligence is going to be your highest score and it is your main ability score. 
that will give you a huge bonus to your attack rolls, as long as you're using a magic weapon though. Also at level three, you get the Steel Defender. This is what I talk about having a metal companion. You get to create a metal, kind of a mechanical companion, in the book, it's pictured as a dog shape, but it can be whatever style you want. You're the creator of this steel defender. It also has a stat block in the book that you should be familiar with and follow as it is its own separate creature. It takes its turn in combat when you do, right after your turn, it follows you in initiative order. And in combat, as a bonus action, you can give the steel defender a command, something to do, and then it will do that thing. It also has an opportunity to use its own reaction, which is called Deflect Attack, which essentially lets it impose disadvantage on an attacker as long as the attacker is trying to hit a target other than the Steel Defender itself. So it's kind of an instant disadvantage on the Steel Defender's part. The Steel Defender does, of course, have hit points and it can die, but the good news is if the Steel Defender is killed, you can revive it or you can even build a new one if you want to if you have a different flavor you want to go with the next day at level five you get a standard fighter ability called extra attack on your turn if you take an action to do an attack you can do two attacks with that one action instead it's pretty standard fighters get it paladins get it a lot of classes get the extra attack whenever you or your steel defender hit a target with an attack you can channel your arcane energy to give it a little more oomph or to help out someone else nearby if you decide to hit a little harder it adds 2d6 damage to the attack or if you decide to heal someone nearby it will heal them for 2d6 hit points at level 15 you get the ability improved defender which Yes, it helps your Steel Defender, but it also helps your Arcane Jolt. With the Steel Defender, it automatically gains a plus two to its armor class, making it much harder to hit. Plus, whenever it uses its reaction to deflect an attack, you can hit the target with a 1d4 plus your intelligence modifier of damage. As for the Arcane Jolt boost, instead of doing 2d6 damage or 2d6 healing, you will be doing 4d6 damage and 4d6 healing at this level. I kind of like the idea of the battlesmith. It's an interesting idea of you're in the thick of it and you're supporting your friends and your allies. I see, see this a little weak right now. That's how I see it. I think the spells would have to come into play a lot. I do like the Arcane Jolt. I do like the Steel Defender idea. I feel like just reading it, it I could see where it could falter a little bit but I could be wrong. This is a pretty new class. They've done their testing. I have not. As for building it, you obviously want a high HP. If you're ever going to use a warding bond with an ally, you're going to need the hit points to take that damage on yourself. So you want to do kind of a smart tank build is what I would think. Have a high constitution, maybe even get the toughness feat so you can be a little tougher, have a higher uh, hit points at that point. Also, the warcaster feat would be a whole other thing. Since you're in the middle of it, you would want something to help you maintain concentration on your spells that you're casting. I think that could come in really handy for this specialist. Another feat that I thought could be fun, but isn't necessarily, you know, optimal for this would be Martial Adept. Martial Adept gets you special attack maneuvers, which are abilities normally reserved for the Battlemaster fighter class. But in this case, you could take on some maneuvers, which could empower your allies even more with Martial Prowess in that case. That is... I think is the Battlesmith, and those are some things I just think would be fun to play with this one with. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've been Richard. Thanks for watching.